The first tip is extruding or cutting text lettering into your model. First create a sketch on the desired face and drop a center line. Now select the center line and activate the text tool. Enter some text. Note all the great options you have for messing around with the text. Changing the font is especially interesting. And you can also adjust the spacing between the letters. So when you're happy with your text and the way it looks, accept the sketch text. Now we're gonna fully define the sketch as is best practice. For some reason, SolidWorks drops this random point at the origin. I have no idea why. So we're just gonna merge that with the end I'm gonna dimension to. So let's throw some dimensions on this. And I'm, I'm gonna accept this. You can see that our sketch is fully defined. Now I'm gonna cut into our body and we're gonna do two millimeters. Accept that. And you can see that we've cut the text into the body. So you could also do, you could also extrude as well. And you can see that that's extruded the text from the body. The second tip works well with tip number one. When putting text on your model, you'll quickly discover the issue of getting it to print legibly. And most of the time, the issue is due to wall thicknesses within the text that are just too small to print well. Using the thickness analysis tool in SOLIDWORKS can help you get better results. So go to Tools, Thickness Analysis, and a, a wizard will pop open. So enter your target thickness. We're going to do 1.25 millimeters. Click Calculate. It's going to process for a little bit. But when it's done, it's going to show you all the areas that are either below or well below your target thickness. So there's two display options, a continuous display and a discrete display. I prefer the discrete display because you can basically change the levels at which it displays. So here, anything about anything below that's red or orange is you know, 0.33 millimeters or below. And that's just gonna be too small to print very well and you're gonna have problems in those areas if you tried to print this. So basically we're gonna have to go back into the font and either make the whole the font bigger or choose a different font. Um, but we definitely need to make some changes here because this will not print well. Note that this is only gonna tell you about thickness problems. It's not gonna tell you about gaps. So you're still gonna need the old trusty old measure tool to find gaps like this that are also way too small and not gonna print well. So with those two tools that can help you uh, get closer to text that's gonna print well. Say you have a cylinder or other non-flat face that you want to cut or extrude sketch geometry from. What do you do? Well, that's where the wrap function comes into play. So we're gonna use text like we did we saw in tips one and two. So basically I've created some text on the front plane. So I'm gonna to select to that sketch. I'm gonna to go to insert, features, wrap, and that's gonna pull up the wrap wizard. Then I'm gonna select the face that I want to either extrude or cut this text from. And you can see that I'm getting a preview, which is a good sign in SolidWorks. So we're gonna do five millimeters and the options are emboss, which basically means extrude, deboss, which means cut, and scribe, which means it's going to segment the text from the face. It's kind of like performing a split line on all of your sketch geometry. So if I accept this, we should see that the text has been uh, extruded from the surface. And if we go back in and we click deboss, it should cut into the body. And there we go. So you can see that it's cut into the face and it's matching the curvature of that face. The wrap function I show is from SolidWorks 2010, which is the version I have. Since then, they've made some great updates to the function. 
including adding the spline surface option, which lets you wrap geometry onto much more complex faces. So check that out if you have a later version of SolidWorks. One really powerful feature of SolidWorks is its ability to do master-driven design, which can be very time efficient when designing for 3D printing. Here's what I mean. Say you're designing a bracket or a flange that's going to screw into a base plate. Normally, if you want to change any of the hole spacings, you have to go into each part and update the spacing individually. So say we want to change this from 30 to 40. We do that here in this part. But if we click on the assembly, we can get rebuild errors depending on the type of mating used. So we need to go to the base plate and change this from 30 to 40 as well. And once we do that, everything's happy in the assembly. But it basically means we have to change and manage the hole spacing in two different locations. However, if you drive both parts with a master part that contains layout sketches, you only need to update the hole spacing in one place versus two. So here, for example, I have my master part with a bunch of layout sketches that, and one of those is the hole spacing. And that basically defines the hole spacing in both the base plate and the flange. So if I change this to 30 here, you can see that it's updated in the sketch. And then if I just click on the assembly, both pairs of holes update automatically. And then you can see that in both the parts, the hole spacing is updated as well. And so it's all very dynamic and you only have to manage dimensions in one location. So you don't have to keep changing it in two places and whatnot. So it's much faster and it can really speed up how quickly you can design 3D printed assemblies. This subject could really span a couple of videos. So if you're interested in master driven design, leave me a comment saying you want to see some videos on this subject. The final tip comes from using heat set inserts with 3D printing. And that's what's shown here. I love designing with these. And if you haven't tried them, you're definitely missing out. Different sizes of heat set inserts have specific diameters and pocket depths that are needed for their installation. The SOLIDWORKS tip is to use the design library and library features to make placing these special pockets much easier and faster. So instead of every time I need to place a, a feature for a heat set insert, pulling up my handy dandy spreadsheet and looking up the correct diameter and installation depth needed, I can just use these predefined versions uh, to make placing the features much easier. So for example, if I want to place an M4 heat set insert, I just drag from the design library and boom, I get the diameter and depth needed right there without having to look anything up. So I have some typical screw sizes to find, M2, M3, and M4. And I also have a variant of each of those that includes a clearance hole as well, so that I have the pocket for the heat set insert, and then I also have clearance for the right size screw going through. And this lets me, I don't have to worry about getting the exact screw size right. I'll know I'll have clearance there for a variety of sizes and that can save a lot of time. So the other thing that you can do is you can also go back in and fully define the placement very easily. And you can see that like with the clearance hole, this saves me from placing those two features each and every time, and it can really end up saving you a lot of time. So of course, library features work for saving logos and other geometry. So it's a really powerful feature that you can use with 3D printing. That's it for these five SOLIDWORKS tips for 3D printing. Do you have any tips you'd like to share? Or do you want more SOLIDWORKS content? Please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you found these tips useful, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to help the channel grow, please check out my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.